welcome uh, welcome back everyone so in the last video we talked about these few apis we have only i think login and register apis right now so uh, what i did is i faced that we are using interface but it should be a class dto class because in the auth controller we are passing login dto so it should be a class and we should be able to add api properties then only these API properties will be available in our Swagger API specs. Okay, so what I did is I just converted that interface to a class, class login DTO and register DTO. And now when I run in the application, I should be able to see this register and all. So now you can try registering it. Test one, test one. Okay, just a dummy APIs we are trying. So, okay, we got the token. So I think this is working fine. Test one, test one. Okay, we are executing this and we got the token, right? So we are able to log in successfully in our system. And what is it? This is a ping pong. Okay, yeah, this is a ping pong API, hello world. Okay, so now we have tested our login and register APIs and now we are moving further to understand the next set of APIs. So first we will understand what all APIs you wanted to build. So we have a login, we have a register, both are post APIs. Okay, now we have a user attribute, user model, we have a product and we have a order. Like what all APIs, possible APIs we can get from there, we will try to document that. So. You can be a owner or you can be a seller. Owner means you can be a buyer. Okay, while creating a user, we are passing are you a seller or you are just a normal user? Okay, based on the flag attribute, we are deciding that. So <coughs> here there can be many properties like uh, for product, fourth class product is a C. What all APIs we can see? It's all in the low case product and Fourth less mine. It means or my product or anything. I will say mine. So what it is going to do? It will validate that uh, first of all you are a <coughs> seller, okay? Because then only you will be able to list down all your products. So what we need to do? check if user is a seller right so we have created a one seller guard if you remember we are going to use that another api can be what all uh, i mean particular list by seller all the products we wanted to list by seller so this can be product and then seller and id okay listing all the product of a particular seller okay here i was just uh, listing down all my products here you can also list down the products of another seller okay other routes which i see is creating the find by id i mean you wanted to find get a particular product this can be a simple api and other can be updating a product information as you are a seller so seller guard will always be there this will be a put call this will be http get and this will be http get this is all what i see is because these are my products and product will have the orders right you can also create your own product that we will forget and you can also have a delete method if you wanted to unlist or delete a particular product post right you are a seller first of all and you wanted to create a product in the system so you will be just passing few information okay product title idle title image description and you wanted to create a particular product create product so in a product service this will create a new row so but getting a particular product updating a particular product deleting it or creating a new product or listing down the product of any other sales seller okay or 
list it down, listing down your own product. You can make it simple like this also product. So if you are a seller, but in that case, you will get only the data if you are a seller. So let's put a mine. So it will, it's a HTTP get. It will give you only your products, okay? Similarly, we can also look at what do we have in the order controller. In the order controller, you can look. So you don't need a seller guard here because here I will be a normal user and I will be looking at my orders. Okay, here it can be order, get simply, which will say, okay, list all my orders. So it will give me all, all my orders, which I have already purchased. Okay, and you also create, want to create new order. HTTP it will be post. So here I am, I am a buyer actually. So this this all operations will be done by buyer entity, which is another type of user. That's it. Okay, this is a seller entity. Okay, so this is another type of user where seller is true. So we should be allowing all these APIs only for seller, most probably, and here these for the buyer. Another type of user. Okay, so we have discussed all these set of APIs. I hope now this is clear. These are HTTP post login and register and we are using these three entities and in the MongoDB we have this one to one and one to many relationship user can have many orders and orders are having products what is the order model if you see order scheme order schema is having the product array we are not doing a referential relationship we are just doing an embedded relationship here I have already published one playlist about how these MongoDB collections can be associated with one another using a reference key, reference ID. Here we are doing embedding means this uh, product itself is having the product, uh, sorry, order itself is having the products array. Here it can be a product collection, right? Product ID we will have and the quantity. So this can be a number of index in the products, multiple products. So this, this is for particular order. Order one will have a three product, order two will have five product. Okay, we just talked about uh, roughly about how, how this is going to work. Now let's create a routes, let's create a controller and for seller, we will just use one guard and for more all the APIs, which we are doing, right? JWT guard will be there, auth guard. Okay, because all these APIs are for protected users. Cool, so let's see in the next video. Thanks everyone.